Having introduced the small signal or AC models, the hybrid pi and the T models of the field effect transistors, we're now prepared to discuss how these models can be used to analyze the small signal operations in circuits involving field effect transistors. There are three different basic configurations that we'll consider. Each of them involves grounding one of the terminals, applying a source to one of the other terminals, and then taking the output at the third terminal. This circuit here shows the field effect transistor with both the biasing voltages, capital V, capital GS, and capital V, capital DDD, as well as the signal to be amplified, little v, little gs. As we've already discussed, the, this type of analysis to find the small signal response applies the principle of superposition. That is, to find the small signal response, we deactivate the biasing voltages VGS and VDD. To do so, we turn them to zero, which means replacing the DC sources with short circuits. As we short out the gate voltage here, it brings the signal down to ground and references it to ground, tying it then to the gate, in this case, to the gate of the transistor. Now, VDD, let's just draw it in here as a DC supply referenced to ground. When we deactivate this or replace it with a short circuit, it has the effect of pulling this side of the this side of the drain resistor down to ground. This signal here, or this circuit here rather, is the circuit that results from deactivating those two DC sources. Once again the signal coming in is referenced to ground going to the gate. The drain resistor or the drain through the drain resistor then is pulled to ground. After deactivating the biasing voltages, we'll replace the, the field effect transistor itself with either the hybrid pi or the T model and then perform the small signal analysis on the resulting circuit. This configuration here, or this, uh, this first of the three common configurations is known as the common source. It's found by, or it results from, shorting this source to ground, thus the name common source. The signal is applied to the gate and the output is taken to the drain. This configuration, known as the common gate, arises from shorting the gate or tying the gate to ground. The input signal is applied to the source and once again the output is taken at the drain. Finally, this configuration, known as the common drain, comes from grounding the drain taking the output at the source and applying the signal to the gate. This configuration is known as the common drain and it's also known as the source follower. By far the most common of these, most commonly used of these configurations, at least when we're looking to amplify signals, is the common source configuration. We'll see also that this common drain or the source follower provides unity gain but also gives us some buffering by uh, giving us a large input resistance. As we study each of these configurations, we'll determine certain circuit-related quantities unique to each of the amplifiers. We saw in Chapter 1, when we analyzed the amplifier in terms of just a black box with an input voltage, an output voltage, signal, and uh, load, we saw that they could be characterized, or that there were characteristics of it that were of interest the input resistance, the output resistance, its open circuit gain AV0, determined with no load resistance connected, its gain with the load connected, A sub V, and its overall gain G, which was defined as the output, the ratio of the output to the source with the load connected. VN is the voltage that's found at the input to the amplifier. Generally speaking, VN consists of a subdivided portion of the signal. The signal runs through a voltage divider consisting of the signal resistance and the input resistance of the amplifier. So VN then, VN will equal V sig times RN over R sig plus RN. Rn is defined as the resistance seen looking into the amplifier 
and we're going to define that as the ratio of Vn over In. AV0, as we've already mentioned, AV0 is defined as the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage with no load connected or R sub L equaling infinity. The closed loop gain, A sub V, is simply the V out over V in with R sub L connected. In that case, we can, in this case, then we're looking at the output voltage being taken across the load resistance, which will be a subdivided portion of this dependent source divided across these two, or V out then will equal AV0 times V in times the voltage divider R sub L over R out plus R sub L. We then can form AV0, AV, or not AV0, just A sub V as V out over V in with the load resistance connected. And in this case then, it's just AV0 times R sub L over R out plus R sub L. Finally, the gain, the overall gain, is defined as V out over V signal with the load connected. The output resistance, R0, is the resistance seen looking into the output of the amplifier when the signal has been deactivated. So it's just the Thevenin resistance of the amplifier looking back into it with the source deactivated.